ओके सो टूडेज टॉपिक इज टोबैको डी एडिक्शन ओके एंड दिस इज फॉर वर्ल्ड नो टोबैको डे विच वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर इज वन to understand what is tobacco addiction how to identify it how to treat it the pharmacological and non pharmacological uh, methods which we have for tobacco de addiction okay so what is addiction first you should know the definition so addiction it is a state of psychological or physical dependence uh, in which there is excessive use of alcohol or any drug so addiction can be Uh, of any drugs of any uh, substance or uh, nowadays internet addiction mobile addiction is also seen so all these things comes under the umbrella of addiction and substance abuse or substance addiction we call it when there is compulsive substance use in which there is socio occupational impairment also so if uh, there is alcohol use just once or twice or socially then we don't call it as, as addiction there should be a socio occupational impairment also so absences from work absences from school or marital difficulties or sometimes physical problems or medical problems which are arising so when there are some problems arising then we say that there is an abuse or there is a addiction problem and uh, specifically when we look at smoking or tobacco three fourths of smokers have a past or present problem with some mental illness also and some other addiction also so why this is important because when we are trying to treat tobacco addiction we should also look if there is some mental illness so treating that is also important if there are other addictions so treating those other addictions are also important so that is why just keep it in mind that smokers also might have some mental uh, illness and other addictions also now nicotine addiction or tobacco addiction why does this happen what is happening inside the brain so there are some neurochemicals inside your brain one neurochemical is nicotine the other is dopamine so in this for this specific lecture just remember whenever somebody smokes nicotine directly goes in the brain theek hai when this nicotine is going in the brain it stimulates release of dopamine specifically in the reward pathway okay so what you can see here is the reward pathway and whenever nicotine is taken there is excessive release of dopamine when dopamine is released in your brain you feel good you feel a sense of reward so because of this there is a reinforcing behavior because the patient feels very good after taking nicotine uh, because of the release of dopamine the good feeling is there and this reinforcing behavior occurs and then repeated usage of tobacco repeated usage of smoking is uh, done nicotinic receptor upregulation occurs in smokers because of this upregulation there are actual changes happening in your brain so you can see this is a normal brain or non smoker brain frontal cortex is significantly uh, decreased there is atrophy seen in smokers same with hippocampus also hippocampus is normal here but in smokers hippocampus is decreased so there are actual changes in the brain happening in uh, smokers so it is very important to remember this thing but still people know that yes smoking leads to cancer it leads to all these things but still why do they smoke because there are a lots of myths and misconception that smoking will help with concentration they might help you relax uh, maybe the feelings of distress which are happening in the patient might decrease some people feel it keeps their weight down or increases their energy levels but this is not so the harmful effects are much much more and if the patient is willing to quit what are the strategies available so for tobacco de addiction there are five a's first is ask about tobacco use so each and every patient coming to the opd is asked if they take tobacco if the answer is yes 
then we advise them to quit again if the advice they are listening to the advice they are heeding if they are ready to quit then we assess the willingness to make a quit attempt so how much is their will power how much are they ready to stop uh, this tobacco use is assessed then we assist in the quit attempt so in this assist comes your pharmacological and non pharmacological methods and then arrange for follow up because this is not just a one time treatment you need to follow up the patient you need to treat them at least for a year and uh, starting the de addiction process we make a plan we tell them lifestyle changes also like exercise managing stress with yoga and other techniques and also support from friends and family is also important so this is the planning stage will power is very important like uh, the patient is asked uh, what is the uh, toughest time that they can't quit what is the first time that they take do they take after coffee with dinner so a uh, time is uh, made that what are the times in which they take and then we counsel them that they have to first make a decision that never to take it and uh, make a commitment stick to it planning is done we anticipate temptations and then we plan how to avoid them how to keep the mind off how to distract sometimes we tell them that uh, yes if post lunch they feel like taking they can take a walk they can distract with some activities so this is what we do in planning in treatment we have pharmacological non pharmacological in pharmacological specific there is nicotine replacement that is to deal with the withdrawal symptoms and then there are other drugs also in non pharmacological that is mostly dealing with uh, different types of therapies which are available so pharmacological is very very important we should try to give them to each and every patient unless it is contraindicated so the nicotine replacement therapy which is available is one is a patch so it can be applied to the skin and then slowly nicotine is delivered to the body there are gums lozenges also available inhalers and nasal sprays are also available but less commonly used most common is a patch or gum or lozenges which is taken so with patch you we usually have 12 12 hours patch so continuous nicotine is there with gums and lozenges we tell the patient whenever they get a craving then gums and lozenges are consumed non nicotine replacement is uh, usually in the form of antidepressant so we have bupropion which is an antidepressant which increases dopamine so as you had seen before dopamine was being increased so this increases the dopamine so the need for smoking or need to take tobacco decreases with bupropion so bupropion and other antidepressants can also be given for tobacco de addiction nicotine patch uh, which is available in 21 14 7 mg in 24 hours 16 hours patch is usually 15 10 and 5 mg this is available over the counter so even if you don't prescribe it patient can go and take new patch is applied every morning and it is better to rotate the placement because if you apply a patch at one side the skin at that side gets irritated so next time when the patch is applied it is advise that it should be at a different site so that irritation is not there common side effects are insomnia so uh, removing the patch at night before sleeping is advised and local rash is also there like contact dermatitis type of uh, rashes or uh, there if the patch is applied then uh, doses is according to the uh, number of cigarettes that the patient takes if the cigarette is less than 10 then 7 mg 10 to 15 is around 14 to 21 if there is more than 15 cigarettes or more than 20 cigarettes then 21 mg uh, is usually prescribed bupropion uh, as we had seen was a antidepressant but we do not give this if there is a seizure disorder if there is eating disorders like bulimia or anorexia 
if mao inhibitors are given nowadays we don't prescribe mao inhibitors but if the patient is taking that we should stop it after 14 days then start bupropion heavy alcohol use is also a contraindication side effects can be dry mouth and insomnia so we give it in the morning we don't give it at bed time non pharmacological treatment options are equally important as doctors we don't focus on this but we should focus on this also so there is motivation interviewing that is we increase the motivation of the patient then we have group therapy family therapy occupational therapy yoga and meditation also helps so what is group therapy uh, patients uh, all who have tobacco addiction they sit in a group and they Uh, share the problems a lot of people who have quit successfully they share the tips and uh, tricks which they used or which helped them in quitting so this is group therapy in which uh, just talking uh, with each other also and giving each other support helps a lot family centered therapy is also very important because addiction affects the whole of family the whole of family is uh, affected and if the family supports the patient then uh, the chances of quitting are even more yoga is also important a lot of patients say that yoga helps them decrease the stress decrease the craving also in a lot of addiction so yoga is also uh, advised meditation again is equally important so uh if we tell them the patient that you should focus on meditation this also helps them a lot so take home message is that tobacco addiction it is a biopsychosocial so for bio we have medicines available psychosocial we have therapies available so identifying and motivating the patients to quit is very important we tell them the pharmacological non pharmacological therapies which are available give them all the treatment options available and try to uh, tackle it with as much uh, treatment options as possible okay so thank you for listening with this we end the tobacco addiction lecture and thank you so much